You've tuned in to When Your Mind Becomes the Scene of the Crime podcast. I'm Dr. Linda F. Williams. I take survivors of abuse and trauma from pain to purpose so that you take back your power, tap into the truth of who you are, and live your best life now. I was talking to this guy the other day, and over two or three phone calls, he was talking about a situation He's in leadership and uh, is with a church situation and was having a challenge with one of the guys in the band. Now, if you saw my previous video, you know what I'm going through. So I found it very difficult to give a flying rip under these circumstances. But I said, okay, I'm going to listen this out. And I listened and I listened and I listened. And the whole conversation was about the knucklehead that was acting out. About the middle of the third time in this ongoing saga, I finally told this person, I said, you're a trigger. I said nothing after that. Yeah, 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 yeah. you're a trigger. This joker is a trigger for you. You have problems with passive aggression. Now, in this ongoing saga about this crap, this guy had sat the knucklehead down and told the knucklehead, no, yada, 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 and this is what the rules say, and I don't want you doing this, and I don't want you doing that, and the whole time he's hearing this joker coming back with these sorry excuses for being a knucklehead, and the knucklehead wasn't owning being a knucklehead. But the way the knucklehead was acting was clearly passive aggressive on every aspect. So in this conversation, I'm telling this guy, I said, yeah, I said, you know what the whole thing is the whole time you trigger. You have a problem with passive aggression. I don't know where that happened. I don't know if it was your 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 your, your uh Challenging relationship with one of your brothers. I don't know if it was him or your grandmother kept beating you up or maybe it was a sibling. But I said, this triggers you. You have a problem with passive aggression. And what's going on here is that you're talky, 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 talky to the knucklehead. But the truth of the matter is that you're telling this knucklehead in 2023 all the things that you as a child coming up were not allowed to tell the person who was your first experience with this type of behavior. So... Put a face on it. Put a face on it. Put a face on your trigger. And, and then they ask me, so what is my trigger? What is my trigger? Now, I'm sitting over here thinking, okay. If I could just know what your trigger was, how deep, you know, what the root of it is, and basically what he was asking me, so where, where, is, where it's coming from? Where is it coming from? You need to get with God on that. And have him tell you where it's coming from. And you need to deal with it at that root. So when I say put a face on it, go back and remember the first time somebody caused you to have a reaction like that. First time you were dealing with somebody who was narcissistic. First time you were dealing with somebody whose personality, if you see it in anybody else nowadays, it's a trigger for you. You don't even know that joker. You can't stand him. It's generally because there's some kind of something that happened in your past and their personality, their gestures, the way they talk, something about that person that you don't hardly ever even know is a trigger for you because they are reminding you of something that went on way in your past. And when I say put a face on it, I mean take it back to the first person, the first situation that ever caused you to have that kind of reaction and when you get back there deal with it back there so that you can recognize when you are being triggered by a certain behavior in somebody else and what does this do it saves you a whole lot of time because i told this guy I said you did a whole lot of talking i wouldn't have been doing period i said all that talking you did to the knucklehead it went over his head. He wasn't hearing none of that. And so you were talking to air. 
And why did you continue to talk to air? Because you're trying to resolve in 2023 something that you couldn't resolve back then. So I, so I told him, once you put a face on that and you take it all the way back to the root of it, you're on your way to healing. And that, that way, every time you're triggered, you're going to go inside and understand what defining moment was the root of that trigger. What happened in my past life that has that caused me to have this? As a tr triggers aren't just getting sucked in out of the cosmos and just attaching themselves to people. You have a root of some unresolved issue when you're being triggered or overreacted to something somebody said or did. And you must go all the way back. There's a there should be a link to a defining moment worksheet uh, in the show notes below and go do that because you got to go back over your life and determine what kind of things happened to me. How did I process that at that time in my life and what things did I come to believe about myself and the world around me as a result of that? So what I'm basically saying is this, and then I'm going to let y'all go. It is not enough to be spitting and spewing affirmations when you have never dealt with the root of an issue. You will notice on my channel, I don't do a whole lot of things like vision boards or affirmations you need to say to yourself every day. I'm not saying that there's not some benefit to that. What I'm saying is that there is no benefit to that if you don't cut to the root of your triggers. You have got to understand why something sends you off on an emotional tizzy. So in other words, we can chase symptoms all day. We can find ourselves all the time trying to rectify in the here and now matters that went on in the past. It's never going to come out right because if you are trying to accomplish something in your life, if you are trying to build healthy relationships with healthy, well-adjusted people, they're never going to understand why you came out of this strange bag over absolutely nothing. They're just never going to understand that. Okay, that's one thing. I guess they don't really have to understand it unless they're trying to be in a relationship with you. But the worst part about that is you don't understand it. We don't understand it. So what I'm saying is put a face on that trigger. Put a face on what's causing this visceral reaction to people, places, things, circumstances, situations that you have. Because if you look, you'll see a pattern in yourself as to the times that you kind of tr get triggered about stuff. And it's not okay just to say, oh, I got triggered and sitting up feeling bad about it. And, and then, you know, you go into this whole thing. You know, I used to do crap and, and just be tore up for weeks afterwards, feeling bad about myself, ashamed about myself and all of that. And that's not beneficial. Okay. What I need you to understand, aside from putting a face on your trigger the face you put on that trigger is generally not supposed to be the person that's triggering you in the moment because they probably wasn't even there back when the crap happened that's causing the trigger. Or maybe they were. If it's your family of origin, then maybe there is somebody there that caused that. Okay, I'll bite, all right? But the truth of the matter is that we don't have to be run by our triggers and we shouldn't feel bad about that trigger unless we're allowing that trigger to ruin our lives. Unless we're allowing it to ruin our lives. So it's the being triggered in itself ain't no major thing. It ain't about, oh, I got triggered so I'm less than good. Or I got triggered so 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 I must not be healing. Or I got triggered so I'm that's a setback. No, 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 I don't want you to have that attitude. Human freaking being been through some trauma, gonna get triggered. Can we just accept that? And so that being the case, that trigger is not a sign or a bad a mark on your record unless you allow it to be. So just getting triggered, the battle isn't over. Yes, I teach you how to see that trigger coming, have a game plan for that trigger before it hits, and walk yourself through that trigger so that you can have more healthy relationships and so that you can have a better uh, 
outcome in your career. I teach you that. That's the reason I'm here. But in doing that, I also show my clients that just getting triggered is not a setback. You're going to get triggered. It's emotion, an emotional response. I take you to the core of that response. You put a face on that response. And then you take control of that response before it hits you again. So t getting triggered is not the issue. That's a human condition thing. Everybody gonna get triggered, okay? You ain't the only one out here getting triggered. So you talk, trying to talk to somebody or be in a relationship with somebody who's trigger happy, I call it. If you trigger happy, that is never gonna work because nobody has enough self-awareness to try to understand the core of it. But Everybody fighting these symptoms in the subterfuge and nobody gets to the core issues, which is something we have to individually deal with. So put a face on that trigger. Determine where you first began to develop this emotional response to that. When you meet people that you just don't like just straight out the gate, sometimes that's your intuition. Sometimes it's a trigger. Know the difference. Okay. But anyway, that's all I got to say. Put a face on it. Always remember your greatest power is realizing the truth of who you are. Know that truth. Thank you for joining me today on When Your Mind Becomes the Scene of the Crime podcast. Schedule your free breakthrough session now at lindafwilliams.com. That's lindafwilliams.com.